The year is 2009. Barack Obama has just been sworn in as US president. Sony has sold over 12 million floppy disks. And Hannah Montana the movie has just been released at cinemas, Alex's favorite film. And Shimano has just blown our minds by releasing DI2, its electronic group set. So far in our Seismic Shift series, we've looked at SIS, Hyperglide, STI, and they're all technologies which feature in this. And it's all been about arriving to this point, DI2, electronic shifting. Launched in 2009, DI2 was a massive deal for the cycling world. The first reliable, commercially available electronic group set. Featured a 7.4 volt lithium ion battery, which was good, according to Shimano, for a thousand kilometers of heavy use and took just one and a half hours to charge. Oh, and um, I know some of you at home are probably thinking, oh, hang on, is that? Is that Tor Hushov? I, I didn't know he'd come out of retirement. Uh, no, 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 it's not, and, and, and he hasn't. This was the first time as cyclists we had to remember to charge our bikes before we could use them. And while charging electronic items is day to day and you know commonplace for many things, a lot of people were unsure about this concept being applied to their bikes. And to let you know that your bike had sufficient charge so that you could use it, well, there was a, a handy little LED here at the front. The group set we have here is Shimano Jura Ace 7970. It's the electronic DI2 version of 7900. And I have to say, it's, it's very easy on the eye. Shimano's done a brilliant job with the aesthetics of it. It's 10 speed at the back, and it's double chain set at the front. We've got a 5339 standard chain set. And it really wouldn't look out of place on any modern day bike. I think it really has stood the test of time, despite being, you know, 12 years old. There are a few other key differences from modern DI2. I mean, the, the mech designs, they're ever so slightly bulkier. They're a slightly different shape and the material finish is quite different. The junction box, as you've just seen, that's dangling here from the handlebars and is a completely different shape and type to the one we have now on modern DI2. It can be neatly integrated and hidden into the frame or into the bar end. And the battery, modern DI2 has a nice cigar-shaped battery which is designed to hide seamlessly into your seat post. This one, it's this rather clunky external battery which is quite neat because you can sort of pull it off and charge it if you need to, but I mean, it's, it's not the neatest looking design, is it, compared to the, the modern one. Here, that battery is mounted on the down tube just behind the bottle, and we did see it there quite often, but it was also commonly mounted on the bottom bracket area, just behind the chain rings too. A lot of people surprised when this group set came out, it was 113 grams lighter than the mechanical 7800 Jura Ace that it replaced, and it was electronic, just like mind-blowing. It did still have a slight weight penalty though. It was 68 grams heavier than its mechanical counterpart at the time, so 7900 mechanical. But moving on now to 2021, and the tables have turned. DI2 is now lighter than the mechanical version. Um, that's once you take into account things like the cables, which add quite a bit of extra weight in the mechanical group set. Amazing. So the original DI2 used a five-wire design to communicate with itself amongst all the different components. And this is quite different from the modern DI2, which uses a two-wire CAN bus method. The reason for having five wires inside the cables was to give each individual shift button a designated wire to send its signal down. So a press 
of one of the shifter buttons would then send the signal down that specific wire and link the circuit to the relevant derailleur to either shift up or down. And when it comes to actually changing gear, that's where the magic happens. You just press the little buttons and we get that distinctive like zoop, zoop sound that like, it's kind of become the soundtrack to either your bike or just on your ride on your friend's bike. Everyone knows that sound now and we can all relate to it. And it's achieved by having a tiny little servo motor inside the derailleurs that drives a worm gear to actuate the shift. Okay, so you probably sat at home and you're thinking, what on earth is a wormed gear? Well, it's a special kind of gearing mechanism that is able to reduce speed and increase torque better than other geared designs. But how does that relate to our derailleurs? Well, I'm going to tell you. So inside the derailleurs are little servo motors that aren't actually strong enough to actuate the derailleur normally. The little motors inside these derailleurs also turn at very high RPM, and Shimano incredibly cleverly worked out that by using a worm gear, they could manipulate these little motors into producing more torque and also turning at a speed that was ideal for precisely shifting the derailleur. Even with the speed dialed down on these motors, Shimano reckons that the electronic shifting we have here is 30% faster than the equivalent mechanical. One of the key differences with DI2 in an area where it excels is that it requires so little input from the rider, allowing you to just you know, concentrate on the ride and enjoy that. Even the, the hand movement to change gear is just a very light press compared to having to push a mechanical lever arm considerably further. DI2 very quickly caught on with the Pro Peloton, and I've heard many pros talking about how it was a game changer and how it made a difference at a crucial point for them, whether that was you know, fighting for a wheel in a Belgian crosswind or sprinting for the line and being able to change gear in that scenario when using mechanical, it would have been a sort of game of roulette, changing gear at that precise moment. But even so, that there were pros who were slow to adopt DI2 and perhaps weren't into the idea at all. One notable example would be Fabian Cancellara, who remained wedded to mechanical shifting. But I guess perhaps humans, we're not always that you know, up for change. And maybe it's more of a psychological thing for some people. The shift from mechanical to electronic has brought the potential for other advancements as well. It's not just about shifting speed, reliability and consistency. You see, for a lot of riders, and beginners especially, thinking about having to change gear can be a little bit complicated. You know, a lot of riders forget to not cross-chain and be in suboptimal gears. But DI2 can solve that problem. See, DI2 is smart. It, it, it has a brain. No, not like the Terminator, don't worry about that. But it does have a synchro shift feature, which basically takes control of the front mech for you, so you don't need to worry about ever cross-chaining or being in a suboptimal gear. Or you can use the semi-synchro shift function, which allows you to change gear at the front, and then DI2 will automatically do semi-shifts at the back just to compensate and make sure that that transition is smoother. You can also use the eTube app now on the latest DI2 with its Bluetooth connectivity and actually lock off certain gears if you want so that you can never get in them if they're a suboptimal ratio. And one of my favorite features is that DI2 has opened up the possibility to have additional shifters on your bike too. I mean, if we cast our minds back to the STI shifters that we looked at earlier. You know, that, that was such a massive game changer, moving your shifters from the down tube up to where your hands were. But now we can have sprint shifters on the hoods so that sprinters can change gear when they're down there, but also climbing shifters. Riders like Chris Froome love having climbing shifters on the tops. And even these little sneaky hidden buttons in top of the shifters, they can be used to change gear too, so that if you're riding in an aero hoods position, 
You can change the gear just with your thumbs on top of the hood. It's great. Over the course of these seismic shift videos, we've gone from you know indexed shifting on your down tube right through to you know, electronic, semi-automatic, amazing DI2 shifting on your bars. And I've been struggling to think which of these innovations I think is the most important and which has made the, the biggest difference because you know you think of like hyperglide without hyperglide di2 wouldn't be anywhere near as good as it is so let us know in the comments you know which one you think has been the most technologically important now, i hope you've enjoyed these videos if you have please subscribe to ucn and give it a thumbs up and i'm gonna ride off into the sunset now pretending to be tour her shot. I'm, I'm not pretending to be Dan Lloyd. <laughs>